Because like we, we want to talk about k derivative and the derivative has to be k derivative has to be differentiable and has to be continuous. Yeah? So uh, and these are assumptions of the of the of the Cauchy's mean value theorem. So so we will take this function here, this f of t, and we will work with that. So first of all, uh, I will I will probably copy it somewhere else because we will need more space. So. Let's um, make a copy of this. Let's plug it here. So, first of all, we will take a look what is value f of x minus f of t, f of a. Uh, so, if you take a look at, at f of x, then what, what you basically get is that you plug, plug inside, then all these things will disappear because you have x minus x to some power. So this, this thing is equal f to f of t minus the, the f of a. Now what is, what is f of t? f of a? f of a is exactly our divorce polynomial, so this is p, pk of, of a. Uh, yeah, and uh, here it should be f of x and here it should be pk of x yeah uh, so so basically basically what we have is that our thing is is exact to the remainder so if i go back here this this thing here is in our case remainder we want to we want to bound this thing is a derivation of 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 that so we will estimate that so now we will calculate derivation of, of f of t and how does this work so you derive term by term and uh, so the so the first term is is f derivation of, of t and then you always have a product of, of two things yeah, because this is depending on the t and this is depending on the t. So the product, you derive one of thing, keep the other, then you derive the other thing, keep keep uh, keep that one. Okay, so so what, what, what happens here is that you have always, like, here is second derivative, and uh, you copy, copy all of this, and then uh, you have also the first derivative and since uh, x, is x minus t inside so minus is going out so we will have uh, the first derivative here times derivative of this so this is going to decrease so this is one over one factorial so, so this, this is going to be like this and then, then plus you are going to derive so you have the third derivative of x minus t squared over one factorial uh, minus and now you, you repeat this so you will have second derivative and then then you have x minus t squared you derive that thing so you have x minus t and um, uh, yeah here it should be second uh, well, over two factorial you divide it by two so you will have one factorial and so on and so on so if you derive um, the power of, of the power L, yeah, what what will what will happen is that uh, basically you will have here either f L plus one derivative of t times x minus t to L to to L over L uh, factorial minus f um, l derivative times x minus um, t2 l minus 1 uh, I'll try to squeeze it, squeeze it there so we have a f uh, l derivative times x minus t2 l minus 1 over l minus 1 factorial but this is something, and um, this is something called telescopic sum because what's what's actually happening is that this thing is cancelling this thing, and this thing here, uh, sorry, this thing here is cancelling this thing, 
and this thing is canceling the next one and so on and so on and everything is going to cancel something except the last term of, of this type which is f k plus one at point e times x minus t to k over k factorial yeah so so basically basically if we if we plug there plug their uh, key value which is what what we want we, we are interested in in this uh, key value and then basically what what we have is we have that uh, that uh, basically f derived at he over g derived at uh, he is equal to to f x minus uh, f a over gx minus uh, ga and so so this this thing here is is remainder and this thing we have already bounded so so basically we want we want to get some bound on the remainder so we know that that r of k of x is equal to f prime at, at he over g prime at, at he times g of x minus g of a so this thing here and we can we can plug 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 this this thing inside so we will get that this this thing is um f k derivative yeah, so so the, we already get there the, the original function at point p times x minus he which is uh, somehow bounding bounding the distance over k factorial yeah so so basically if x and a are close enough also this number is going to be very close yeah? and if if you know that your derivative is small then then also this thing will be will be small but you have to not forget about about these things Yeah, so now now the question is how to how to choose the function uh, g and there are um, actually many possibilities how to do it and they are too too famous uh, probably because because they they work in, in the nicest way that they simplify simplify the the most and these two are um, some are called uh, Lagrange form which says okay so choose g of t is equal to x minus t to k plus one and Cauchy's uh, Lagrange's and Cauchy's form and uh, I actually don't don't write this this here so and this is this is a simple a simple choice that uh, we will choose t t minus a uh, we can we can actually we can actually take a look at what we will get we will get um, so if I if I copy this uh, this thing here okay so if we if we basically apply mm, this uh, Lagrange form here. So for a Lagrange, we will get we will get that the remainder of R K X is equal to. Um, let's see. So so um, basically, first of all, we have G X minus G A. So if it's uh, G of X, then this thing is X minus X. This is zero. So we have just G of A. This this is going to disappear there. And uh, G of A is uh, is x minus a to to k plus one. Uh, so so we have x minus a to k plus one minus the whole thing divided by the derivative of this, which is k plus one times derivative of the inner thing, which is which is minus minus uh, x minus uh, minus x. Mi x minus a to k so these things are going to uh, to uh, cancel out 
this is going to cancel out and then we then we will add the rest so so this uh, this here is k factorial over x uh, minus he to uh, k f uh, k to one he and this uh, this hopefully is uh, correct uh, yeah yeah it should this uh, should be this should be this should be correct so uh, let me just uh, just check that we have right formula this these things I don't think there is like any anything uh, um, Okay, so let's see. Somehow, mm, mm, do I have the uh, the result correct? Uh, <laughs> okay, so so uh, I can this uh, thing I got I got uh, from from Wikipedia basically basically they could they claim that it, it should uh, should get something else that somehow x minus uh, he should get cancelled out. Hmm. But I'm, I don't really think it's uh, you will you will get it by by plugging there. If you if you plug there x minus d to to k my um, if you plug there x x minus d to to k to k plus one. And this uh, should be correct. Um, okay, so so what what you get is there is x um, x minus. Uh, okay, so so this this is nothing. This is this is x minus a two k plus one. This is uh, when you derive it, you will get k plus one. Uh, so so. So, so they somehow claim that this uh, x minus x minus he to to power k is is going going to to disappear, but it it should uh, it should not disappear. So ah, I see, I see. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yes, uh, because uh, here it's not x minus a to to power k, but x minus he to power k. So this is really going to disappear, and what is going to remain here is uh, this uh, k plus one. So we get that uh, the remainder is equal to f k plus one derivative at point e over k factor k plus one factorial times x minus a. To k plus one, right? it's, it's nice because it's everything cancels out. Yeah, and uh, you can think on your own to uh, to get a cautious remainder. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's, it's necessary to do, to do it here. Yeah. Okay, so because because this video is already already pretty pretty long, so so let me let me conclude with uh, the last thing. So let's take that we would like to estimate. Exponent uh, the value of, of e. So we will we will uh, use we will use that it's exponential of one, and we know that we know that exponential at point x is approximately one plus x over one factorial to 
to x uh, to k over k factorial. So, so this this very very nice, very simple formula. So let's take we will, we will take we will take this, and we would like to know what what is the error. How how much how uh, how uh, can we how much can we bound the, the error using using this this Lagrange remainder? So we just we just plug there. So so basically we um, we know that uh, our a value is uh, equal to zero. Our x value is equal to one. This is where we want to compute. Now the derivative is differentiable and continues everywhere. As you can derive how many times you want. Okay. There's no problem. The conditions are satisfied. So, what we know, we know that R k, our remainder, is equal to uh, k plus one derivative, but this is also exponential. So, exponential at some point he, yeah, and he is lying in open interval zero one times uh, divided by k plus one factorial times distance of x and a, which is 1 to 1 to k plus 1, so nothing. So this thing here is at most a, so it's more or equal a, we don't know what is it, but we can bound it from above by, by e, e divided by k plus 1 factorial. So relative error of k degree approximation is 1 over k plus 1 factorial. This is this is relative error subject to subject to value of e. So I don't know if, if k is equal 10, then we have we have 10 factorial which is uh, which is how much? So we have um, 5 factorial is 120 uh, 120 times 6 is uh, 720 times 7 is um, a lot, uh, uh, whatever. Uh, Five forty is it? Yeah, I think so. No. So, so this is uh, 700 times 7 is 400, 900 uh, plus uh, 2140. So, uh, so 540, ah, 540. Okay, 540 times 8 uh, times 9 times 10, whatever. Uh, some big number, and th this number is uh, is uh, roughly like like 1 million or something. Think of, of this this order of magnitude. So basically, if you do this approximation, you will get the correct answer subject to uh, six uh, six or something something digits. Yeah. So yeah, these these factorials are growing incredibly fast. So so you will get you will get. Very correct approximation, extremely fast. Like, so actually, for normal applications, you you can use like three or three or four anywhere, or they they be they be very accurate. Okay, so so this is this is the idea of of Tyler's polynomial, and then you can you can basically formally formally um, define exponentials as the finite series of some of these, and, and you can you can do a lot of work there. But I'm not going going to do details in this video. is it's already long enough. But I think it it uh, shows that basically Tyler's polynomial is, is a nice idea. You can you can really use it to you can really use it for for practical things, and uh, also also I think it's it's quite quite nice theoretically because because you know um, some statement about approximating some complex Complicated functions by by simple simple things like like polynomials. Okay, so so that's um, everything for today. So thanks for watching. Yeah, and see you next time. And definitely next time, what what I have to do? I have to finish that that video about about set theory which is still pending and I, I wasn't able to finish it for some time already so so
we will talk about Cantor's diagonalization and, and nice, nice uh, magical, magical stuff like this. Okay, so bye.